<laughs> I'm gonna mute you too. That's your cue, uh, Tom. You Tiffany. can take it. So Tiffany, Tiffany, real oh. quick. So if you reach out to Susan McLean mm -hmm. with EXP, mm -hmm. all you have to do is ask her if she can send you a list of everyone that's registered un underneath George's organization. Awesome. I'll do that. And she'll I'll give you a whole list that. because they have this spreadsheet that attaches and it can give you that. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. So that way they, we don't miss anyone in case they, they forget to give their name that they are going and stuff. So, all right. Well, thanks for the, uh, the, the educational tips that I got this morning on uh, CRMs that I need to. Yeah, really seriously, that was for everyone else on the call, not you, it, right? No, absolutely. And you know what? <clears throat> You know what's great about that is as I'm um as I go through what I have for you guys today, I'm going to talk a little bit about that because it does talk um about working uh smarter, right? Work harder and or smarter. But the, the part of the smarter is what are the tools that you're using for 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 your leverage? Because I will tell you, um, today's call is basically about taking action. And I want to share some things with you that are going to really help you. Um, I actually had the I actually had the privilege of I don't know who's crunching that is all right so I actually ha had the privilege I've talked to a few agents through the week uh, last week as well and um, one particular was Ruth and and I said Ruth if you want to achieve this here's the actionable items you need to take and she goes, well, I need to, I need to role play that because I need to know it. I said, I understand, but do it. And she made a post about that. It's nothing, it's nothing more than uh, what we've always learned and we're coached on for many, many years. And it's this, ready? Go for the appointment and stop giving information that doesn't need to be given over the phone. Period. What's your commission rate? Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you asked. We're going to talk about that when we meet. What's your uh, marketing like? Oh my gosh, when we meet, I'm going to go through that. Well, you know what? Other agents do it cheaper. Oh my gosh, that's so important that we go through that when we meet. I'm going to make sure we get there. When would you like to meet? You see, you always go for an appointment. You don't give anything over the phone because here's the thing. You've never been able to earn the business through that call by them asking what your commission rate. What's, what do you think of my price? What do you think of my home? I don't know. All I know is if I want an appraisal on my home, they don't look it up on the internet and just tell me the value. They come out, they do an appraisal, right? It's an opinion of value. Same thing with a vehicle. So you got to take action, right? So taking action means not being a perfectionist at something, but moving forward. So I'm going to um, I'm gonna share some things with you guys. I got quite a bit here I want to go through. As you know, and I've done this many times, <clears throat> there's a there's a book that I read every day, and it's the John Maxwell Daily Reader. And today, this is the read for today, and it goes perfectly in alignment with this call. And it says improving your tenacity. See, if you look, you think about tenacity and taking action. The the tenacity is what's going to push you to take action. You beat 50% of the people in America by working hard. You will beat 50% of the people in America just by working hard, says A.L. Williams. You beat another 40% by being a person of honesty, integrity, and standing for something. Honesty, integrity, and standing for something. You don't have to make stuff up. You don't have to lie because I will tell you, if you don't know the answer to something and you answer it and they ask you again and you don't know, they're going to remember. Okay. If you don't know the answer to something, oh my gosh, Debbie, that's a great question. When we get together, I'm going to give you the best answer that I find. Don't answer it. I promise you. So many agents are digging a hole for themselves by answering a question. They have no idea what they're answering. What's the zoning here? Oh, that's residential. Oh, what's, what can I put on it? Oh, a five-story building. You don't know, don't answer the question, okay? Um, so 
Even yeah. if you know, sometimes Tom, you shouldn't answer exactly. That, that should be a question. If you know, you really need to check with the zoning office. It's easy. You can call them because what you want to add on to your build, building has to fit in with the zoning requirements. There's setbacks. There's all kinds of things. You don't want to own that because if something were to happen and they make a choice based on what you said, they're coming back and saying, you told me that I could do that. And all that changes on a regular basis based on uh, development. So 50% of the people, you you beat 50% by working hard. You beat another 40% by having honesty, integrity, and standing for something. So think about that. Honesty, integrity, and standing for something. See, most people will bend their integrity for a paycheck. Don't do it. I promise you the reward, financial rewards do come in. The last 10% is in a dogfight in the free enterprise system. So to improve your tenacity, work harder and smarter. If you tend to work on the clock and you look at that clock, it may be taken away. The other thing is stand for something. To succeed, you must act with absolute integrity. However, you can add to the power of purpose. You will possess an additional edge. Write on an index card how your day-to-day -day work relates to your overall, overall purpose. See, some people will say, what's, what's your goal? Well, my, my question to most people is, what's your purpose? There's a big difference there. See, the purpose will help you achieve the goal. Because if you know what your purpose is, then you know what your why is, then you'll be able to take more action to do the things that you need to do. Then review the, that card daily to keep your emotional fires burning. Here's one that was really interesting to me. And when I read it, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this all makes sense to me, right? So here's, here, listen to this, make your work a game. Have fun with it. Make it a game. Now, I'm highly competitive. I argue with my family, my kids, my friends about how I'm going to win. And at the end of the game, they're mad at me. I hug them and say, I don't even say sorry. <laughs> Play Monopoly with me and you're going to throw the board. I promise you. I want to win. If I'm not, if, I, if you invite me to a game, I'm playing to win. That's what's fun right? I'm not a sore loser. I'm just playing to win. All right. So here's the thing. Nothing feeds tenacity like our natural competitive nature. Some of you may say, oh, I just play for fun. Okay. Then why play at all? Play to win. Play to win. See, you're in real estate to play to win. Don't just you want to have fun with it. I get it. Some most people will say, I say, what do you sell real estate? I want to help people. Can I, can I, can I add to that? So are you doing this pro bono and never want to make a penny? No, I need to make money. All right. So you're doing this for money. And help people. But do you have the tenacity? Are you taking action? Find, find a, a Try to harness that by making your work a game. So making your work a game, you become very competitive. Find others in your organization who have similar goals and create a friendly competition with them to motivate you and them. Here's what I would say is be very cautious of that and don't ever throw anything down someone's throat like I beat you. Ha, ha, ha. No. Oh my gosh. Here's the results. How can we help it change next time for you to be the one in front? What stopped you from getting in front of me? Don't ever slam down someone's throat that you beat them, even though it's a competition, especially when it comes to business. Approach your day with tenacity. So tenacity, taking action is, is, is a key element of reaching your full potential in real estate. Uh, a lot of people will say, well, what's that got to do with, I need a script for that. Well, let me ask you this. I will take someone who has no scripts that'll 
go on uh, that'll make a ton of calls and go on appointments and they will outbeat anyone who masters the script that doesn't make a phone call try me uh, it it is truth it is the number one thing that we're not executing and it's taken action with tenacity take action and trust the sales process that it will work you know I, I, tell, I, I have shared with you guys, um, and I've been following him, uh, and I can't think of his last, uh, I, I can't, I know his last name, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Chad's son, Chad, he's, I, I believe he's in Ohio. He was the largest exit team with 100 agents, and he'll do 700 million in production this year. His son just turned 18. He graduated high school in June. He was at Build in July. The conference build and um chad uh um jeff willem said hey ro his name is ro ro are you in the audience he stood up he said how old are you ro he goes i'm 18 he goes when did you graduate high school he goes last month he goes and you got your real estate license he said yes he goes well what have you done in a lot how long you've been licensed two weeks how many calls have you made Twelve. Hundred dials in two weeks. Twelve hundred. Now, if you take ten business days and divide that by that, that's one hundred and twenty a day dials. So Jeff pursues. Uh, he goes to say, "Okay, do you know what you're saying?" He goes, "I have no idea. My dad gave me a couple scripts to look at, but I just..." I was scared so much that I just started to say whatever just to get appointments. He goes, how many appointments did you get? He goes, I got nine in two weeks. He goes, well, what do those appointments look like? He goes, I got three buyer contracts signed. Did you heard that? Start thinking about that as the laws start to change throughout the US, a buyer's contract signed. He has a buyer. It's like a listing agreement with a buyer. Oh, I don't want the buyer to sign something. No. It's a buyer's agreement. And he had two listings. In two weeks, he had five. So I follow him. He's already had nine closings since July. Nine. He's been, he just graduated high school in June. He took action. He took action. Steve Pugh hired a young man, Andrew, right out of high school. Andrew. Andrew did like 30 transactions his first year with, with Steve. He took action. He had no idea what he was saying. He had no idea what the scripts were. He went for an appointment, got his mentor and his, his partner to go with him, and they helped. Now, he's, a, he's awesome at scripts. He's not, I, I wouldn't say he's a master at scripts, but you know what? Script and role play with him and, and look at your scripts and tell me he doesn't know it verbatim right? So taking action. I'm going to give you some, um, I'm going to give you some useful tips on what to, uh, by taking action. The first thing of taking action is you make, you need to make a decision and commit to taking action. You got to figure out what's important to you, what's your purpose, and then take action. The, there's a thing that gets in the way of taking action. And here's what it is. You ready? Fear of judgment. What are they going to think of me? Who's going to judge me? The fear of the unknown, the fear of failure. So let's, let's just put that aside and just let's make a decision to commit to take action. I'm going to call 54 sell by owners this week. And I'm going to have a competition with Claire. We're both going to call 54 sale by owners and we're going to see who gets the most appointments. You know, get up, get someone to commit with you. So that way that you guys can hold each other accountable and report to each other every day. Make a decision to commit. It's exactly uh, creating leverage. This is exactly what uh, Debbie was talking about to us all, not just to me, you know, the, our CRMs are leverage for, for us so we don't forget. So it's an easier process. 
and, uh, and uh, visualize your success. Visualize it. Don't go into it going, nobody's going to talk to me today. I'm going to, I'm going to bomb this today because you already failed. Visualize your day. Visualize your week, your month, your success. And then you'll get through it. Visualize the yes on that listing. How does that be? And you hear what I always say, listing, 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 listing. Because when you're prospecting, most of the people that you prospect is for sellers and then buyers come. I'm not telling you to avoid buyers. So you got to visualize your success. Visualize and then take action. Adopt, <laughs> adopt a growth mindset. It's, it's in the book, the book mindset. I got it right on my shelf behind me. Carol Dweck, she talks about two different mindsets that people have, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. See, you got to get into the growth mindset. In order to get into the growth mindset, you might, be able, you might need to eliminate people in your life that are fixed mindset people. Don't eliminate them. Just avoid them as much as possible when you're in your uh, business mode because they'll pull you down. They're like anchors. They will sink you. Great book, by the way. Um, set goals the right way. Set the goal the right way. And look at it as often as possible. See, what, what happens is we, you know, business planning is coming up in October and there's going to be quite a few going on. Just keep an eye out for those. We set a goal for a year and we never look at it again. And we go, that's just too high of a goal for me to achieve. I'm just going to wing it every day and hope that I achieve it. Well, break it down in by the month, break it down by the week. And then look at it. Are we going to nail it every week? No, but get back on track. So plan your day. Every night, I look at my calendar to see what my day looks like. Every morning I get up, I look at my calendar to see what my day looks like. And if I have any spaces in my calendar, I don't know if you guys can see all that. There's a couple little spaces. One is lunch. I should put that in for lunch. But that's all I got for today of a space is lunch. If there's a blank space in there, fill it up with something. Plan your day, prepare your environment, um, your friends, your family. You know, just let them know, hey, this is this is how my my business and my career is going to grow for the next twelve months. You know, and here's the rewards. You got to get the habits and routines. Get a great habit, and just change one little thing at a time. One percent better every day will put you so far ahead. What are those habits that are getting in the way of you taking action? There's a lot of habits in the way of people for them to take action. I'm going to, I'm going to say this, and, and, I, and I say this often. Every single person on this call, we got 42 people. Every person on this call either has an addiction themselves personally, has been affected by an addiction through a family or a loved one, or knows someone that has bad habits of addictions. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now, it is real. And I might be talking to you right now, but I'm gonna tell you, you have the opportunity to either help them, fix them, you can't fix anybody. You can help them. You can be a support to them or yourself. I said to a personal friend of mine the other day, uh, not the other day, probably about a year and a half ago. I said, listen, man, I'm not going to say you have a problem, but here's what your problem is. When you, when you do the stupid shit you do, it affects the greatness that you do during the day to help others achieve getting a home. So if you allow that stupid crap that you do get in the way of affecting people's lives for their homes because you choose to be selfish minded, maybe you may want to go to a meeting with me and just check it out. You know, uh, so here's what I would say. Nearly eight years and I was I was that person 
that allowed habits to get in the way of my full potential because I was tired, wasn't feeling well, headache, you know, all those things. I'm telling you guys, if, if there is a habit that you need to overcome, find a way to do it because you already said to yourself, you don't want that bad habit anymore. You've already said it, whether it's eating, sleeping, whatever those habits are, you already know you don't want it anymore because it's not good for your business, your family, your health, or your future. So um, develop better habits, get, eliminate poison, eliminate things from that are, are restricting you. Take action early. You got to get up early and you got to be able to take action immediately. Well, I want to lead generate at three in the afternoon versus 8.30, 9.30 in the morning. No, do it in the morning. People have the most energy in the morning. People haven't dealt with crap because of their day. Make the calls early. And appreciate fear because you're going to have it every step of your life. And how you manage it and how you get through it is what's going to help you create more tenacity and, and production. Listen, there's many things that I fear. The person I fear most is myself. I fear myself more than anything. I fear that I might have a reaction to what someone says, or I might have a fear of how I act because of what someone does around me. So I have to prepare myself to go, it's not about me, right? So I protect that. I know where my weaknesses are. I know where my strengths are. And I do get afraid of that. I do have a lot of fear of those things. And sometimes if I know that I won't be able to control my actions or my mouth, I just avoid it. I avoid it. And sometimes if you avoid it, it takes away your opportunity. That's about becoming 1% better. Okay. Can I add to that, Tom? Yeah, yeah. So this is what's interesting when we have those people in our, what I call our hula hoop, where we can just verbal vomit or verbally vent so that we can get that stuff out of our head to be able to move into the positive quadrant. Let me just say, I praise those people that are in that space with me, because I know that Tom and Debbie and Liz and all of us, we give each other permission to get that stuff out. Because if we hold it within ourselves, which is what Tom is talking about, it will consume us and it will make us ill. However, it, when we are given the space to get it out and nobody's trying to fix us, but when we're listening to that rant of irrationality, we actually hear our own words that are irrational and our brain automatically gets us into a better positive quadrant because the bad is out, which allows the good in. It allows us to self-aware, which is a more positive tool when it's self-awareness than somebody speaking at us. It's allowing us to hear our own selves and correct those things. And it's a more productive way to do it. So thank you, Tom. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Liz, for, for doing that. Well, it's it's sharing, it's sharing our 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 it's sharing our experiences. It's sharing our wisdom, right? Um, and and the, the reward yourself. Have a reward system. You know, even if it's a small reward, right? Reward yourself weekly, monthly, annually. Reward your 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 supporters weekly, annually, monthly. And it doesn't have to be a financial thing. It could be a reward of a card, a handwritten note. Um, you know, something. Um, because when you reward yourself on a regular basis, you are that much closer to achieving that big goal that you desire. And here what I said, big goal. Stop going for a small goal, right? Curtis said to me yesterday, hey, you know, I think big and you're thinking small right now. He didn't say I think small always. I'm thinking small right now in the conversation we were having. I said, you're right. Let's be a little more optimistic and I will move that needle, right? Because I'm always an optimistic thinker and a big, uh, you know, thinking big. But sometimes 
I get caught in the conversation where I'm not thinking big and I need to be corrected. That's what's so great about the people I'm surrounded around. They keep reminding me, right? Because sometimes we can lose focus. Reward, have a reward system. So if you um, have this beautiful goal of achieving this financial uh, success in 12 months, three, three years, five years, whatever it may be, what is that going to do? What's, what, how's that going to fulfill your purpose in life, your family, your friends, supporting someone who's ill, whatever it may be, and then reward every single week, every single month that you are achieving it. Because that's what drives you and that's what gets you excited. And that's what, you know, I'll tell you right now, I see Desiree right there and and, and I might be off track by saying this, but I'll, I'll tell you, she felt deflated in a conversation that her and I had. And she surrounded herself around someone named Liz who's made a difference for her and Desiree's made a difference for her. They both have made a difference for each other. Is that true, Desiree? Yeah. So here's the thing, guys. You know, surround yourself around the right people. Take action. Go out there. Get in front of people. When I tell someone, if I meet with someone and I say, hey, I think you should reach out to so, 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 so and do these things. And then they call me again and they go, hey, I'd love to get another call with you. And I'll say, hey, did you reach out to so and so and do these things? Well, no, sorry, no more calls. Sorry, not doing it. Because you didn't take action on the small little things that we talked about. So I feel like I wasted my time. And you didn't have any respect for it to even do anything to better yourself, unless life hit you and you could. There, there was some things that are going to. You got sick, or you had to run off to your daughter because a hurricane smashed the, the area, right? Because um, Claire and I have a commitment for some things, and 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 yes, she couldn't do it because of those. That I get it; it's understandable. So take action, reward yourself, have a purpose. And, um, you know, I want to open this call up to all of you that are here to get whatever you like. What is your aha? What did you hear? Um, and I'll go back to when I started in real estate, I was handed a phone book and a newspaper. And I was handed three scripts. And by the way, the scripts are the same today. And they're in workplace, in documents or files, uh, just Type in scripts, the search, and you'll see them. For sale by owner script, expired script, and sphere of influence script. A phone book, a newspaper, because by the way, guys, there was no Zillow. There was no Realtor.com. There was no internet like it is today. It was Roadrunner, dial-up, and all that other stuff. And we had to use a phone. We had to knock on doors. We had to have a relationship. We had to take action and speak to people. Not send a text and go, oh my gosh, maybe if I send them a text, though, they're going to do business with me because my text came from chat GBT, T, 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 and it's the best thing ever. Who cares? Make contact. Stop being afraid. Send a quick little video introduction. Do something, but take action, and action will always out overdo someone who knows everything that doesn't take action. So, um, all right, this is your uh, your time. Uh, what what are your ahas? What did you hear? Because I I learned something as I was reading through too, guys. You know, um, there's some notes that I took for myself. And one was clarity. Right. Tom, you just dropped a huge nugget. And I don't think that you realized how huge it was. And, and here's the deal. When we're looking at a lot of the big businesses and big teams, they're not built on chat, GTP, or whatever that thing is called. They're built on relationships. And those relationships are face-to-face, phone-to-phone, voice-to-voice. It's built on their authentic selves and helping each other build their businesses. And that is the key to our business because we're to serve and protect the consumer. So you just solidified the fact of big businesses have true authentic relationships. True authentic relationships are not built on emails. They're not built on text messages. 
They're built on face-to-face -face and voice-to-voice -voice communication and conversations. So thank you, Tom. That's yeah. huge. Well, thank you for saying that. And here's the thing to, to guys, um, ChatGPT and all that there, I'm not taking away from what they can do for uh, additional leverages, leverage pieces for helping you write articles or whatever it is. There's a lot of great things coming up with this AI, artificial intelligence, but one thing it will never replace is the human contact, right? See, can you imagine, uh, you know, and I know Liz is a diehard um, Eagles fan. I'm a diehard Patriots fan. I couldn't imagine a bunch of robots on the field playing because I wouldn't watch it. Oh, but they had artificial intelligence and they're robots and we don't have to pay them anymore and blah, blah, blah. And it's easy. No, I wouldn't watch it anymore. It's a contact sport that will be that way forever or it will no longer exist financially to uh, a, a value. So that right there should tell you robots and artificial intelligence will not take over the world. Relationships is the biggest part of your business. And if you can get into relationship and use the AI as additional resources to leverage your business, your communication, fantastic. It is what it is. But until you start meeting, greeting, and making a difference for people, you know, um, and you just rely on that, that may not be the right resource. I don't know. Maybe it will. Who knows? Anybody else? Ahas? Go get them, peeps. Ah, oh, Debbie had to go. All right. <laughs> I'm looking. What was the name? He had of a nine o'clock. So this is what's so funny, Tom. You know that I'm committed to having a certain amount of conversations each week. And um, most, some of y'all on this call understand that um, through AGI, Debbie and Curtis and myself, we run RISE Coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching. So what's nice is the fact that our RISE clients committed to a certain amount of conversations that I shared with them this week, I said, I can't ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do. And I'm committed to have 100 conversations a week, period, end of story, hurricane or not. And Tom can attest to this, hurricane or not, I talk to as many people as I can over the phone and meet new people where I'm at. I've probably had more conversations with new people in the past two weeks and it has been excruciatingly painful throughout this hurricane situation. However, it has been the biggest blessing to learn and understand and grow and knowing the people that are around in this area. It's huge. So in meeting my commitments, because I never want to say you need to do this and not that, you know, I have not run into a lot of realtors. However, I've still stayed in touch with the ones that I told Tom I was going to stay in touch with so we could get together you know, and get them over here at EXP. No matter what, I was committed to 100 conversations a week. I always have been, you know, which leads to results, you know, and the results are this. I found a tree guy. I found a stump guy. I found a contractor. I found a foundation guy. I found the FEMA lady. The FEMA lady needs somebody's help of where she lives in Mississippi. You know, I, I talked to everyone to get their names and numbers so that I can be of service like they were to us. So no matter what your situation is, stick to your commitment. We are seeing the conversations that are bolder, that are deeper, that are quicker with a larger conversion rate than 10 to one. And that's the standard conversion rate for an average agent is 10 conversations to one prospect. I mean, that's just the way that it is. So. Just keep doing what you're doing and stay consistent. Make the commitment week after week, time after time. Doesn't matter. Stay committed because it will come no matter what. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. You, you know, the again, it's the action, right? It's the action. Take action. Take action. Take action. Um, so many of us, including myself, um, we have this. We get super excited. We get this plan. We get this great script. And we love it and we love it and we analyze it and we look at it and we go, all right, I'll start it tomorrow. And then procrastination gets in the way and then life gets in the way and other things get in the way and we don't, we don't do it. And then we go, 
and and we got 40 people on this call right now out of the 40 people i would say more probably half of us half of the people on this call are questioning whether they want to stay in real estate or not maybe more of you here's what i will tell you if you don't take action it's on you it's on you who cares if you mess up and you stumble and you say the wrong things and you stutter and everything else, who cares? Again, I'm going to tell you, I sat with a lady that I called probably 12 years ago and she went to school with my father, had a massive crush on him and all this other stuff. By the way, my dad died when I was three months old. I met her through a freaking phone call, cold call. So my wife and I got to sit with her and her husband Saturday. She wants uh, Kim and myself to help her sell her condo because she's moving back up north. And she goes, I can, I tell everyone the story that you and I met over a phone call and I was able to get a picture of your dad and, and everything that you never had. And by the way, you look just like him. And, you know, he had dark hair, you got blonde hair, you know. Uh, so guys, I was able to get get in relationship with someone that brought something more. I didn't care about the commission. She think I care about a commission when I got a picture of, of someone that was, uh, that that's my dad that I've never had guys, you don't know what you're missing. So get over the darn fear. And by the way, she never hired me at the beginning. When my wife got licensed, she hired my wife. <laughs> so anyway, um, but we remained in relationship. She's in the CRM, by the way. Um, and if I would have been afraid to make that call and stay and call, by the way, uh, no, I'm not interested. You're a realtor. Um, please don't call me again. That's how the conversation started. And I just said, oh, fantastic. I don't want to work with realtors either. And we just kept talking and I kept digging and digging and digging. And um, I should invite her to a call one day. I should invite her to a call one day. You want to talk about fear, you know, that was kind of fearful. It was kind of fearful, but you take action. Desiree. I just wanted to share, um, you know, this whole year I've been inconsistent with door knocking, following with my open houses. And this last month, I kind of just, it just hit me that, the reason I'm not getting is I'm not hitting my numbers is like what Claire said, the number of conversations I'm having, right? So I'm doing open houses, but it got slower, less people were coming to the open house. So how do you amp up the conversation numbers? So I started doing um, the door knocking and like last weekend, let's take Friday, I door knocked 38 homes. I talked to 10 homeowners out of that 38 homes and one of the people I didn't speak to, you know, I left flyers on everyone's door. They texted me while I was at my open house and was like, hey, do you think they'll take a cash offer of 550? The house was listed at 699. I'm like, why don't you come over and let's talk about it? And she did. Now I have an appointment today um, in a few hours. And we're going to go look at a home that I found her. I was like, well, we might be too far apart. We can put in that offer. But I did happen to find you the perfect home. And I did. It meant every single thing that that she mentioned. And she was just like, wow. And um, literally it, it worked like that. So if you're feeling like you need to get out of the business, maybe just go take a walk around your neighborhood and start talking to people. The guy walking his dog, you know, just see how he's doing. Does he have any family that he's missing that should move to Florida, like, or wherever you're at? Just get outside and talk to people. I I haven't practiced scripts. I haven't practiced all that stuff, but like they said earlier, you know, I'm better than 50% of the people out there because I'm taking action. So I mean, hey, I'm I'm already got better chance than most people because I'm on their doorstep. And they um, they see that I'm hustling for their neighbor. And they're either gonna one or two uh, responses that I see. Wow, you're a hustler, or I'm not interested in selling right now, right? Or I am interested in selling right now. Like, talk to me. And I actually had that the weekend before where I picked up four listing leads from taking a walk, like four. That's four. And they're all double sided, right? Because they need me to help them find either a realtor out of the state or in the state. Okay. That is two weekends. 
and 17 people showed up at my open house. One of that, one of those couples looking to buy cash. This house wasn't good enough for him. He wants 750 as his budget cash. I was in a 699 house. Oh my gosh. He drove for two hours to see this open house, like 17 people guys. It's like, there's so many opportunities. The week, the two open houses that I did before that, I didn't get as many. It was slow. However, since it was slow, I did training. I did my other calls. I did stuff like that. And then I was like, all right, time to meet my numbers. And I did it again for the conversations that I needed to have because I knew I was behind all my goals. And even though they're saying, you know, it's slower right now or people are looking for next year. Well, if you don't get out right now, you're not going to have those January closings, February closings. You're building your pipeline because a lot of these people are like, you know, they need a couple of months to think about it. And it's right either you were going to run right into December, but right after that, income tax is going to hit. So really just get out and start talking to people. Like a lot of people are misinformed and they need to be educated. And whether they're not buying or selling, if you can just educate them, you're giving them that wow moment that they're going to remember you. You took that time out to give them those nuggets and that knowledge and to like, change their mindset. You know what I mean? You're turning on the light because they're in the dark. And if you have that mindset, like you're going to be the light, then just, it, it doesn't matter what they say. You already know, you know what I mean? Like you're there coming from contribution. Like there's nothing they can say. Like I, I walked on a guy's door. He's like, I'm not selling, I'm not selling. And I was like, perfect. Cause I'm not trying to sell you. However, I'm having an open house and I would love to meet the neighbors in this um, in this, in this community. And what do you know? And, so, and listen, he showed up in my open house. Then he went back, brought his son, came to the open house. Then he went back and got his uncle and came back to the open house to meet me. Okay. Yes. So just get out there. Don't be afraid and give me a call if you need a boost, because I'll, I'll boost you up so that you can go and take action. All right. Desiree. That was awesome. Thank you. Now, I, I'm going to ask you a couple questions, uh, Desiree. So you said your numbers were down and then you went back out to door knocking. By the way, your numbers were down and you knew that by door knocking would probably increase your numbers of contacts, right? Now, yes. when you first started door knocking and going, all right, I got a door knock to make contacts, were you looking for reason not to door knock because you didn't want to go out there or you, you did what or was it i'm going out there i'm making this happen every reason it's too hot it's raining i gotta do laundry i have three kids that need homework help i every reason so then after two weekends of having no one show up at the open house not committing to door knocking the only person i could blame was myself right so I decided who, those excuses weren't good enough for me anymore. So and it, who got in the, the way of you? Who got in the way of you door knocking sooner? I did. Yeah, isn't it crazy what happens? And we are the, look in the mirror. We are just self destructing ourselves. We are telling ourselves it's too hot. I got laundry. I got too many things, and we got all this stuff. By the way, everyone does, right? Everyone has those things, but we got to start prioritizing what's most important. And that is if we don't make contacts, we don't get appointments, we don't get contracts, we don't get funds to, to fund our perfect life. Now, I'm not saying work every single day, every hour of the day and take away from your family. What I am saying is don't let yourself get in the way of your opportunities. It's hot. I don't want to do this. Blah, blah, blah. Now, that's where consistency comes in to avoid that. The more consistent you are. So I take a cholesterol pill every single day because I, I, I don't know how to fight this darn cholesterol issue. It's, and I've told the doctors I'm not taking it. And finally, finally, I had no choice. I had to take it, right? And diets, everything else still way out of control. I take it every single day. And I take it every day to maintain my cholesterol, and that's medicine. If you consistently do the things that you need to do every single day, it's like, think of it as medicine. It makes you healthier. It, it brings everything together better. And now if you 
procrastinate and you don't take your medicine, you just don't feel well. You, you, there's other things that get in the way, right? So think of think of your work as consistency. I got to take it every day. It's my medicine. It's whatever it is. It's a game like we talked about earlier. Think of it as a game. Be, ten, be tenacious. So thanks for sharing, Desiree. That was awesome. And um, you know what? We all go through this cycle. Just thank you guys for giving me the tools and um, just like even the little sayings that I hear in my head to keep going, you know what I mean? Like even like the just one more or um, Claire saying a hundred no's, right? So I knew that I did two months worth of open houses and talking to people. I knew that odds are somebody that I knocked on the door is going to say yes. It's just the law of numbers. You know what I mean? So if those 40 doors didn't sit, told me a no, I didn't care because I knew that the odds are somebody at my open house was going to say yes. Uh, that's just how it works, right? So just get out there and talk to people. I love it. And by the way, the power of one more, that's where that came from with the book with Ed Milet. Very powerful book, guys. One more rep, one more call, one more door knock, one more. And that actually that one more becomes the most... Uh, the biggest compound interest in your business is it's interesting that one more, ah, I'm tired. One more, just one. Yeah. So, um, and uh, even in the, that book, if you guys haven't read it, it's, you can download it, um, download Libby. It's an app and um, you're all part of NAR. So you can get into the NAR library for free. You can listen to it for free. And oh, um, yes. I'm all about the free, Tom. It's for free, it's for me. Wait, talk about the NAR library, what? Libby, it's an app called Libby. Mm -hmm. And um, so you have to join the library. You can join your local library or NAR's library, both. And then you can um, download any, you have access to NAR's entire library. So you can listen to all those audiobooks. I didn't even know you could do an extra library. And you can do your own local library, yes. Spell Libby. L I B B Y. Yeah. Okay. Huh. I have to figure out how to add a library. I didn't know you could do that. That's, that's it. See, look, I, I so learned- here's, here's yeah. what we just experienced from Desiree. This is called the law of attraction. Okay. Oh, it says add library right there. There's yeah. a red one. Add library. There you go. <laughs> I use Libby all the time. Yeah. <laughs> So this is like the law of attraction, right? So N-A-R. Uh, I'll get it. I don't have it yet. <laughs> I didn't even know it was there. <laughs> Tell me, Claire, say it. What's that? So when we're talking about the laws of attraction and we're sharing with one another, this is what ends up occurring. We pass on what we have so freely been given. So through those 100 no's, it led you to excruciating pain that put you into action <laughs> to lead you That's to where you needed to get. Universe. It's right there. It's right there. Yeah. That's like all of two seconds. All these books are on hold at the library all the time. <laughs> I'm so thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> Alice, I love it. <laughs> Glad I tuned in. <laughs> That's awesome. I got a little win I want to share real quick. I've got um, a million dollar listing up here that has been a a booger. It's just not selling. But a guy called and talked to me on the phone about it. And then I didn't hear from him for seven or eight months. He he texted me while I was at a family event and I could not answer about seeing another property. I met him there for the first time. He toured the property, put an offer in, got under contract. And just yesterday we went past inspection and past appraisal. So right after, after coming out of a really slow summer, I, I needed that little win. <laughs> that's really a treat. So that's it. I'll mute. <laughs> Alice, thank you for sharing that. You know what? Here's the thing. You might get a, a listing that's not selling and you're doing everything you can. And whatever for whatever reason, it's not selling. It could be price. It could be whatever it is, right? It doesn't matter. But that listing will create opportunities as well. 
See, that's the thing that you want to think about when you're taking a listing. See, I always talk about listings. If you go out and get a listing, you will bring in a buyer. One listing helped me create 500 sales. One listing. We were in the down market. It crashed. It was a it was a short sale. It was a brand new home through a builder. This guy came in from California. He said, I want to buy this home, but I want to buy it for this. And by the way, I'm going to share with you how you can make a ton of money by going to banks and looking up debt uh, portfolios of debt through the banks. And we're going to buy them. We're going to pay you on the purchase because you're going to make us a lot of money too. I thought this guy was full of crap. And then I, I always call it a God thing because there, there's a reason this man showed up. There's a reason I had that listing. And by the way, if it wasn't for him showing up that day, I probably still wouldn't be in the business. We did 500 sales in two and a half years through that portfolio of debt. And by the way, the average sale price is 85, 90,000. So it, it, you know, it, as much as I thought I'd make millions, but it brought us through what was the most challenging market ever. Get listings. It might've been more than 500 sales. I was still behind George when he was selling 900 homes and I was selling 150 on average a year. You know, I was a, I was a nobody. Tom, that just reminds me of a previous brokerage firm that I was with during that time. And they told me that I could not negotiate short sales. And I was like, oh, really? That's interesting because I can. And <laughs> most of the agents only handled luxury listings. However, the majority of those luxury listing agents filed for bankruptcy. And I did not because I was willing to get in the trenches and do those short sales, negotiate those short sales and have double the amount of closing sides that they did. Just saying I did what it took to get through that market. You know, you do what you do to serve your people. And it's not always nice. It's not always pretty. But when it when you get to the other side, those people are your forever clients. and Many of them have purchased multiple homes at this point because of that, because I was willing to stick in the trenches with them and have an authentic relationship with them. They prefer business. It, it's it's what you have to do. It's building those relationships that build your forever business that leads to the legacies that you lead beyond this world. You, you know, I tell people all the time, listen, if you want to make $200,000 this year, all you have to do, this is a fact, all you have to do is talk to 200 people a week and you divide that by five, that's 40 a day. You want to make $200,000, talk to 40 people a day. Well, that's a lot of people. Do you want to make $200,000? Talk to 40 people a day. Honestly, consistently, that is 200,000. It might even be more because of the conversion rates that you get. That's the law of numbers. That's the law of numbers. Two, 12 listings a year. And the reason that happens, guys, is because you're going to capture 12 listings will capture probably close to 30 to 36 units in sales. So be purposeful. Don't walk away from a buyer, but be purposeful on your time to go out and find people that are willing, able to sell. Who cares? And can I say, Tom, that that's at an average price point between 275 and 300. So all of our price points are different in the areas that we are. So I did need to preface that, that taking 12 listings between 250 and 300 leads to $250,000 a year in gross revenue. Just letting you know. Yeah. And that, and that was between 15 and 20 calls a day. Conversations. 15 to 20 conversations, five days a week is a $250,000 paycheck. So what's stopping you from listening to Tom well, I want to share something too. I can when show you, you say, my I can show you my balance sheets. When you say 
that's a lot of people to talk to. Conversations. Conversations win business. Conversations create income. If I didn't talk to 50 people per day, now this was just my thing, and I'm not talking just talking about me. I'm just using this as an example. I used a piece of paper with the system one, two, three, four, five. If I didn't talk to 50 people a day that I've never met, calling through a phone book, calling through Zillow's, calling through uh, ads, calling through everything, I had to have 50 conversations a day to earn a certain amount of income and sell a minimum of 70 homes a year. You guys don't have to do that because the price points are so much higher. And I know 100,000, 150,000 can make the most amazing impact in your lives. Just freaking 100,000, you know, talk to 22 people and you're going to see that may even turn to 150 to 200. At least start with something. If you can't hit 10 a day, hit two a day. That's 10 a week. You're already that much closer. Stop saying you can't get conversations and appointments because you're on social media. I will tell you this. I get on social media way more than I should be, but I look at people, people that I have conversations with that are failing. I look at their social media and I go, I know why you're failing. You're too worried about what other people's great lives are on this false social media uh, platform where they say that more than 50% of the stories are fake because people are suffering. All right, guys, I hope you got something out of this call. Thank you for those that shared. Desiree, I love the fact that you jumped in and you shared because I know you were being, you felt so deflated uh, when you and I talked earlier and then you started to advance into relationships with Liz and, and doing the things that you need to do to get over that, uh, that, that, you know, that slump that you were in. And, uh, and I commend you for seriously taking action and yeah. walking sweaty, you know, who the heck want, especially females, men is a little bit different, right? A female knocks on the door, soaking wet with sweat, it, you know, the makeup's not running or the makeup's running, the hair's not looking pretty and all this stuff. Guys, be humble, get there. And, and like she said, people would say, man, you are hustling or I'm not interested, not get the hell away from my property, right? She's out there making a difference for herself, her family. And you know what? And I'm sure she wasn't feeling her prettiest when she was knocking on some of those doors. Oh, no, I was not. And I have a backpack with water bottles and like a sweat rag. So I can wipe my face before I talk to these people because it's hot. And then I brought a white umbrella. Then my kids broke my umbrella. So then I thought I was prepared. And I was like, I guess I'm sweating today. Like, because again, not going to let the excuses get in the way of hitting my numbers. I'm committed to, you know, if we're working for Q1, then that work is right now. And that's how I'm going to build my relationship. I don't have a huge sphere up here because I'm from Key West and I'm now in central Florida. So the only way I'm going to be able to hit those numbers is, you know what I mean? I got to think outside of the box and, or just do the old school work. You know what I mean? Door knocking and open houses, whatever. It's fine. And I'm going to, um, implement cold calling two days a week starting soon i'm getting ready for that but i'm just doing this first i was going to do some objection handling first so that i get good at that before i start those calls you know the best objection uh, handling is asking a question why is that important to you yeah and you know what you're going to find desiree there's only a couple of rejection handlers that you need to handle um over the years of making, I don't even, I, I, I wish I would have kept logs of all the calls I made. I threw out a lot of documents, but here I knew there was only a few objections when I was calling for sale by owners and expireds. Number one is commission. Oh, and here's what I said to Ruth, and she's gotten multiple appointments just from this one conversation. That, oh my gosh, that is commissions fully uh, negotiable. I can't wait to sit down with you and really go through that. Well, what is it? Again, 
I can't just give you a number. We got to see what best fits for your needs when you're selling. And she said she kept saying that and she got the appointment. You know, uh, Kevin Ward, uh, Mike Ferry, they have the best uh, commission objection handling. Here's, here's what it sounds like. Desiree, is there anything else stopping you from hiring me? Tell me commission. Commission. Yeah, it's price. I don't want to pay 6%. You don't want to pay 6%. I completely understand. Are you confident I can sell this whole mess based on everything I've already told you? Well, yeah. Okay. Is the commission the only thing stopping you from signing right now? Yes. So if we can settle that, you're good to hire me? Well, I don't know. Okay. So here's the thing, Desiree. I completely understand. And commission's always been a, a factor in, in sellers selling their home. And I get it. This is all your equity. But I want to share with you. Nobody pays me a commission. Okay. I want to show you how I can earn that. And here's what I want to ask you, Desiree. Would it be right for you to hire someone for less commission? Would you be okay hiring someone for less commission? I mean, if they can get the job done and I don't have to pay them as much money, why not? Okay, I get it. I get it. So here's what I'm going to ask you. If I'm a businessman and this, and this career path is supporting me, my family, my future, and my legacy, and I'm willing to give up that, what makes you think I'm gonna defend your value? So when, you hire, when you're interviewing agents and they lower their commission, they're actually telling you they're not on your side. Do you want someone like that working for you? No, I don't. I need somebody fighting for me. I'm gonna fight for you, Desiree, so I'm gonna earn every bit of it. And let's do this together because it is a partnership and I'm going to get you the most money than those other realtors that are only going to care about getting that paycheck because they can't even negotiate their own income. What makes you think they're going to negotiate your value? Yeah, no, that's true. I want that, to mention something. That will work every time. I promise you. It is a script, by the way. It is a script. It is nothing I made up. I've picked up multiple listing appointments and I have people in my pipeline and they never once questioned a 6% commission, three and a half to me, two and a half for the buyers. Wasn't even a thing, like not even brought up. What? And why? Because I'm drenched in sweat at their door. I'm trying to sell their neighbor's house. They know I can get it done. I'm over here. Hello. They're trying to be together. Who do you know that can buy their house? They already know. Like there's, it's not even a question. You know what I mean? You see your grind. They see your grit. I never very, ever had to say I'm lowering my commission. Very seldom they'll they'll tell you you have to lower your commission based on your value that you bring and deliver it to them. By the way, I want to mention Jessica Baskey. She's one of our Florida celebrities. Um, yeah, there she is. She was on the. <laughs> um, were you on the Florida call this uh, last week, Jessica? Because they were talking. Hey, good morning. I was not. So, if any of you seen. The email that came from the Florida State broker yesterday, there was a gentleman that does the recap. He does the recap of the Florida meetings, and he kept mentioning your name. Wait, are you serious? Oh, go listen to it. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about, right? No. Okay, so Florida, so if you're a realtor in Florida with EXP, every, we got an email yesterday from our state broker that says um, basically the it's a recap of the Florida state meeting and it's a gentleman that does it. And he, and he talked about you on that call on that uh, recap. I'm sweating. <laughs> what was he saying? You got to go listen to it. I can't give it up. I can't tell you. Oh my it's gosh. Only, that is so funny. I'll go. I'll it's go only a seven today. minute. It's only a seven minute video recap. That's I'm awesome. trying to find the video now. Did you Thank see you the, for the letting me know. yesterday it came in from Florida state broker? Um, and it said recap or something like that there. I'll have to take a look. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, guys, I got to get, I got an appointment, um, at nine o'clock and it's a 20 minute ride and I'm going to be fighting just to get there on time. Good luck. Thank you, Tom.
Hey, Tiffany, when does George get back? George is back. Okay. He was texting me this morning. I seen some messages come through this morning. I wasn't sure if he was back. 